it will be our fourth and last keynote uh, talk by Olga Paris Romaskiewicz. And I'm very, very happy to have Olga here with us. And I will pass on the word. Are you all ready? Yeah. I give you the microphone. Thank you, Olga. Thank you very much, Andres, for inviting me uh, to this conference. And uh, I'm super happy to be here. I feel that there is this community of people who love and believe in mathematics. Um, uh, so in this talk, I will speak about myself <laughs> and things I did and I'm doing for uh, engagement in mathematics. Uh, I hope that it will be helpful uh, for you in what you do for mathematics. And maybe you will learn some things about uh, French system uh, of how it works. Uh, so most of the pictures of the stock are taken by uh, Bertrand Paris Romaskiewicz. And uh, uh, I cited Marie, uh, Lucien and Clémence Pironnet as my main uh, collaborators. Um, uh, so the talk is called From the Lighthouse to a Common House. I will explain why uh, this name uh, uh, in, in later. So who am I? Uh, so let me define me as a Russian and French woman, pacifist, and research in dynamical systems. Uh, I think that freedom and love are forces of change through dialogue and common action. So I really wanted to say freedom and love in a math talk. I never had an opportunity. But I think that uh, it's really uh, things that, that guide us and they should be mentioned. Uh, so I have uh, math uh, present in my family. My both parents are teachers at the university. They both did PhD in Moscow State University, as did me, my sister, my grandfather, my grandmother on mother's side. Anyway, you see, so uh, Russian math community had a big influence on me, maybe even more than my family. Um, so I started at Moscow State and then I did a PhD between Moscow and Lyon in France. And uh, when I finished my Cotutel PhD, so I had two supervisors, I was flying back and forth between Russia and France. Uh, and in 16, I live in France and uh, in 2020, I have a permanent position in French system. It was very relieving to get it. <laughs> And uh, I have eight years of uh, active outreach experience. So I, I put outreach uh, uh, in, uh, how it's called, quotes, quotes, uh, probably for the same reasons that Olivier don't really like this word. I will try to explain why. Uh, and I actually outreach uh, really for me was kind of uh, an opening on how uh, my personal story is completely <laughs> Uh, not adequate with what is happening in the world. I mean, I, I lived in this bubble of mathematics, of people who love mathematics, share it, and then I understood that not everybody loves mathematics as I do and has uh, the same relationship as uh, I do with math. And um, um, yes. Uh, so, uh, when I started understanding this, uh, things started changing for me. So, also when I came to France, I uh, liked finding different formats of things to do in the labs I stayed in. Uh, and in the last three years, I have spent time thinking really on how mathematics can interact with society in France and in Russia. So, I'm sorry, there won't be many, lots of math in the talk. Uh, I know you like math. Uh, it will, will, will be more about humans uh, who do math. So uh, a defining experience of my adolescence, so to say, it's uh, this uh, Dubna School of Contemporary Mathematics. So Dubna is a city near Moscow. Uh, it's a city where there is also an institute for uh, nuclear physics, and it, there are many, many researchers na naturally in this place. Uh, and uh, there, uh, since 2000, there is a school for uh, 200 uh, of students. Uh, with a uh, math background where uh, teachers are researchers. So the school was founded by uh, many uh, very important Russian mathematicians as Arnold, uh, Novikov, Anosov, uh, and uh, I was lucky to see uh, all of them. Um, uh, two of them are not anymore with us, but Novikov is still still there. Uh, also, some other teachers as Glenn uh, Panina who did wonderful talks on different subjects. Uh, so students are 17, 20 years old, like the last uh, years of school and the first two years of university. 
Uh, and I uh, first went there when I was 17 in 2007 and came back almost every year uh, with some poses. And really the, what we do there, we go uh, to math lectures, we discuss math. You see here uh, a researcher and a student think, uh, thinking about math and you kind of don't know who is a researcher, who is a student. You know, there is this kind of feeling there. Everybody is very excited and I think there was also very important thing for me there that there was not only math, there was also uh, poetry, evenings, music, uh, swimming, uh, being together. And for me, I remember it was very important because I was thinking oh, all these serious researchers and then I would play ta table tennis with some serious researcher and win. And it was like, ah, oh, okay, they're just people who can lose at table tennis, you know? And it was really important for me. So I got this feeling of community excited about learning mathematics, and I'm sure you have some experience like this. I, I hope, I, I don't know, I'm not sure, but I mean, maybe you have something like this. Um, and then uh, I went to France, I came to France to do my PhD, and uh, I kind of saw that even in the mathematical laboratories in France, I don't get this feeling that I got in Dumna. Uh, for example, PhD students were in one corridor and all researchers were in the other. And they would, they would, we would meet it, actually. And I was very shocked and actually lonely because of this. So um, I took one year to understand <laughs> this. And then we created this seminar, which is called, uh, in French, Seminaire de la Détente Mathématique, which is kind of recreational mathematics. Détente is like a relaxed state in French. Um, and the idea of the seminar is that anybody can give a talk, uh, a student, a postdoc, a um, um, PhD, uh, a, a graduate student or, or a researcher and there was no, you know, the, the theme that you had to choose is the theme, the mathematics you like. It could be about Rubik's Cube or about uh, um, uh, some uh, vapor, uh, like dolphins making some knots in the water and things like that. So uh, you, you can take any subject you like. And for me, it was also very important. I, I felt that some things, some communities can be created uh, inside, uh, uh, inside mathematical laboratories. Mm. So this seminar is actually still going on. I'm not anymore there, but students really need it and they continue uh, organizing it. Um, and then, so um, I did PhD in 13-16 and uh, I was very lucky to have uh, a supervisor at Tianjis. He's very known in France as one of uh, um, popularizers of mathematics. He did wonderful movies. If you uh, haven't seen them, I recommend. They're called Chaos and Dimensions. Uh, they're free online in many, many languages about uh, dynamics and geometry. Uh, with, with his collaborators uh, Aurélien Alvarez and Joss Lace. And we were three students, uh, Valentin, Marie and, Mo and me. And we did things which were not really <laughs> PhD work. So you can ask yourself, when, when did I write my PhD? So <laughs> uh, actually when my problem was stuck, I would go to Marie and Valentin and uh, we would do some outreach together and we all finished our PhDs. And uh, I'm doing research, Marie is a mathematical storyteller and Valentin is a math teacher in school. Uh, so uh, we are still here with mathematics and uh, we did a play uh, about um, Alicia Bull, uh, a mathematician who discovered uh, and studied and classified four dimensional polytopes, like uh, analogs of platonic solids in dimension four. So she, uh, the name Bull, you know her maybe because of her father, uh, George Bull, who uh, invented Boolean algebra and she w is has also very exceptional mother, Mary Evers Boo, who wrote a lot on didactics and pedagogy of mathematics. Uh, and then we did an ex exhibition on mathematics of the sky, uh, about three-body problem, uh, which we hope is accessible to anybody who speaks French, uh, uh, about uh, celestial mechanics and mathematics uh, involved in celestial mechanics. So these were projects that I was doing uh, when I was uh, in PhD, and I think 
the reasons that uh, were guiding me to do the projects uh, were uh, the, um, me wanting to reconnect either with the people in the laboratory because I com was coming from Russia, I was a little bit lost on French system, or just wanting to spend time with people who are excited about mathematics and to share mathematics that I like. Uh, okay, so let's discuss about the, this word, outreach. So for me, it doesn't seem a satisfactory word. Um, I mean, of course, it's more important to do things uh, than to just discuss words, uh, but to cite uh, one of the best magicians in the world, uh, words are the most inexhaustible source of magic, cap capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. And I believe that the word outreach, maybe it says something about how we see the activity, um, like out, out of what, out of where. Uh, and uh, I looked Wikipedia definition of outreach and it's defined as institutional uh, uh, sharing of mathematics, uh, but mathematics is shared by people. I understand that communities, associations, structures uh, can be considered as institutions, but um, I, I'm not sure it's... I, I question if this word is uh, kind of uh, pointing at a problem more than... <laughs> Uh, a little bit pointing at the problems that we try to solve. I don't know if I'm clear, but um, so I have when I uh, hear outreach or something like diffusion, diffusion, like something diffuses something. You know, I, I imagine this lighthouse with this light, like Eiffel Tower, uh, going around us with light, diffusing knowledge. Um, but at the same time, when I was in Dubna school, I felt like I was a mathematician because I just wanted to know things, you know, to understand things. And I really want to, um, to find this feeling that everybody finds this feeling that they are a mathematician. Uh, so this is kind of a, a, main, uh, a main intention uh, of what I try to do. So this, this is really my story with mathematics and society. And more and more I think about this idea that I want everybody to... Uh, feel as I felt when I was in Dubna school. I feel that actually sometimes it's not only mathematical questions, but also questions about how our institutions work, our society work, how uh, the questions of power sometimes. Um, and um, I did a TED talk, I did interviews to local journals, and I continue doing these things, but at the same time I, I'm questioning myself. I, I really don't have a good answer if this is the most effective thing to do or maybe it's better to uh, draw mathematics with chalk in the streets with everybody and things like that. So I think I am somewhere on this uh, on this arrow at the moment. So uh, I know it sounds very pretentious this program but I, I really believe this is this is this is what I'm doing at least. Uh, uh, so there are three points. <laughs> of uh, the program of democratization of science, otherwise from the lighthouse to a common house. The, the first is desacralization, uh, so reconstruction, like a demolition of a lighthouse and building a house, like this abacus from behind the glass, you know, like break the glass, why, why do you need a glass? Uh, cooperation inside the research and education community, m more of the meetings like this, and what Andreas says, like, what do we need? We need to communicate more. Like, I feel that three days are so not enough. <laughs> um, and not about ju just joy and fun stuff, but really thinking about what we should do. Um, research, education, uh, and mediators communities. And reaching out uh, uh, to communities. So if you think about a house, destroying the lighthouse, being a house, uh, building a house, cooperating with people who live with you inside, and then, if it, not everybody is in the house, put a house on wheels and go, go around the world, or something like that. I know it's not very precise, and it has many problematic issues and concrete uh, things to do. <laughs> it's not as easy to, to put in place, but that's what I do, try to do. So let me speak about projects. So one of the projects I'm involved in now is about cinema. So uh, it's a cinema club, so we watch a movie and we discuss, uh, discuss it in, in Lyon. Uh, so for me, the main goal is to really create the space of citizen science and deconstruct stereotypes about research. Um, so I'm sure you've seen some movies about mathematicians. Uh, they're 
uh, they have qualities, but they also have some problematic points. <laughs> uh, they're usually about men getting crazy about mathematics or something like that. I mean, uh, even Beautiful Mind, a film about wonderful math mathematician Nash is not exactly maybe what was his real life. I mean, it touches many people, but at the same time, it kind of plays on the image we want to deconstruct. Uh, some girls who are 16 years old in... Uh, uh, Marseille and who learn mathematics, they said uh, to a sociologist in an interview about mathematicians that they imagine that mathematicians drug themselves at night and try to solve problems. So that's uh, what girls think today about me, you know? So uh, I, I want to deconstruct that. So sometimes the only thing you need to do is to show uh, how, how we look like, who we are. And even if if you are a white male cisgender, you can just come and uh, show that you don't drug yourself at night every day. And it's already, uh, you know, it's already in very big. It's, it's crazy, but that's where we are. Um, and another thing that I may be useful to you, I understood that speaking only about math is not very uh, productive because uh, people who come, if I announce the cinematic as only a mathematical cinematic, is people who are already in math. So what we try to do is to show movies which are a little bit further from math, like particle physics, <laughs> or even more further, like neuroscience, or even nothing to do with mathematics, like Coraline an animation movie, and people in the end of the discussion will say, hmm, but it's called uh, Math Cinema Club. What is the link about math? And then I'm like, okay, there is no link, but I see the link, and I will tell you what I see. And you uh, mathematicians always see math in anything, so you can always start a discussion. And so the Cinema Club is in collaboration with Maison de Mathematique et Informatique that Olivier told about this morning. And if in the end you give them the program of MME, uh, people maybe will look at it and maybe will come to MME after the Cinema Club. So it's a lengthy process, but I found it uh, quite su successful on a very, very uh, small scale, of course. But I think it's uh, uh, an idea which took time for me to make that actually to deconstruct some things about mathematics, you don't need necessarily to speak about mathematics. Um, uh, so the second uh, project, uh, it's called Street Math. Uh, so we draw math in the streets uh, in Lyon. Uh, it was our, our association called Mathematique Vagabonde, so Vagabond Mathematics. We started it in the end of 2020, uh, when everybody was uh, tired of sitting at home. Uh, and the main goal was also this deconstruction of, uh, you know, s kind of sacralization of science when one person explains uh, math to everybody. We have just a rule, one rule. For example, for Sapinski gasket, we have a, a binary uh, addition and people draw. Uh, and anybody can participate. So, for example, this one, they're called mandalas. They're very good. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, circle, you divide it in equal angles. You can, if you want, speak about how you, uh, how you draw a big circle, how you divide it into angles. And then you just uh, make actual symmetry. Uh, people can choose the forms, they can choose anything they want, and then they repeat the form and all the analogs around. Uh, everybody can participate. You should be uh, attentive and form little groups to follow the circle. And it's very beautiful, so this is the main place in uh, of the city of Lyon. Uh, this is Sierpinski uh, gasket. Uh, so you just, uh, there, are some, there is some preparation how to do it. We have written a little paper, didactical paper, how you should do it. And uh, uh, it looks very nice. And there is lots of liberty in color and how you color it and, and things like that. And the fractal, the big fractal works that, uh, uh, very well. You shouldn't make mistakes because if you made a mistake in a line, it propagates. So you should first put crosses. This is what we discovered. Uh, yeah, And maybe a little bit less known, uh, how to draw a knot uh, from graphs. If you have a graph, uh, the graph will define a knot. Uh, you need to kind of, on each segment of a graph, uh, draw a cross, always uh, choosing the priority on the right or on the left, but everywhere the same. And a triangle, for example, gives you a trifold knot. 
uh, etc. And then you just follow, kind of follow the edges of your graph. And this is, can also be drawn together. So this is a street math project. The, we do it in two hours. You need a lot of chalk uh, and you need no rain, of course. So we kind of def decide in the morning if you do it or not. So it's a very small initiative. But what is fun is that people join. Uh, people who pass by, they can join. And uh, you get people who cross the streets sometimes. Even if they draw one brick, uh, it's uh, very effective because they draw a brick and say, what are you doing? It seems nice. And we say, we are doing math. And they're like, Ah, okay. And then they go away. Um, and children like it. The only problem is uh, what happens with their clothes, but any no parents uh, 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 complained for now, so yeah. Uh, the third project, uh, it's called Mathematica. It's a very different project because it's uh, more a journalistic photo um, um, project. Uh, I think uh, initially Sylvie wanted me to speak about this, but uh, some some things happened <laughs> in the times. So uh, we uh, crossed Russia by train in uh, summer 2021. We went to Khabarovsk, which is on the east uh, part of Russia, and uh, went by train to St. Petersburg. And so this um, uh, this was planned in an exhibition about 10 women engaged in mathematics. So we wanted to speak uh, about women. It was an uh, invitation of a committee for women in mathematics of uh, International Mathematical Union, and it was planned for ICM in 2022. Uh, as you know, um, in Russia, uh, Putin started the war uh, against Ukraine in February 2022. So ICM in St. Pers Petersburg was... Uh, annulated and um, we couldn't finish uh, the exhibition. Uh, for me personally, it's also, I couldn't really find a way to kind of formalize it, you know, kind of find a way in which I could speak about these 10 women with wonderful projects at the moment today. So for now, the project is to be resought and finished uh, when the time comes. But I uh, think there will be a continuation. For now, I hope to meet these women again and uh, speak to them uh, how, um, how what is happening now in Ukraine and everything which is happening now in Russia as well uh, changed their lives. I know some already left Russia, some, some close to their laboratories because they were international laboratories and things like that. But uh, what we have so from this project, it's a blog that uh, I have written while we were crossing Russia. So there is already lots of material if you want to know how a uh, research lab in Russia uh, work. Uh, and um, you can look at the blog. It, it was also a feminist project, so uh, you can also learn uh, about uh, how women, uh, women mathematicians live in Russia. We were also interested to speak not uh, only about, uh, with researchers, but also with teachers. And there is um, uh, this woman on the slide, she organized the 800 children math camp. So it's like every year, 800 children do math from ages like from 5 to 17. It's incredible. Um, in Kazan, in, in Tatarstan, in the southwest uh, of Russia. And we have an Instagram on which I also put the pictures why we, tra why we traveled. Uh, so this is the third project. I was really interested to understand uh, not only mathematics, but also uh, society and uh, how, um, how Russia lives uh, from the point of view of mathematics. Since it's been almost 10 years, I have left Russia. And for me, it was a way to reconnect to my country. And I'm very thankful that I could do it in 2021 uh, because it's like a postcard of, um, of Russia before, uh, before 2022. Um, so uh, on a more uh, joyful note, uh, there is another project called Cicadas, uh, so Les Cigales in French. Uh, it's uh, also uh, a feminist project, a girls-only uh, camp. So uh, girls come to CIRM, so it's a big mathematical center in Marseille, which is a center for conferences, so it's a research center. And uh, school girls uh, come uh, for one week to do math with us, with researchers. 
uh, do sports, um, play games, um, do a, a dancing party, uh, and all these wonderful things. And as I wrote, everybody is crying in the end and organizes as well. Um, so we organized it with my um, colleagues, mathematicians and uh, computer scientists in Marseille. Uh, it started in 2019 and nowadays uh, the school happens twice per year. So it's a very small initiative. We only touch 50 girls per year. Uh, but um, I learned a lot with it. So I feel that what girls need most of us, uh, there are these three things. Sustain their interest to math, help gain confidence, and show them who we are uh, and what is uh, our job about. Uh, uh, everything else they already know. Like the joy of mathematics, for example, they know. They come because this is a school that where they apply to go. So these are girls who want to spend their vacation doing math. So you know they're already... <laughs> Uh, interested in some sense, they just need sustain, sustained interest. Uh, and uh, I'm also very happy that we have uh, in this project a collaboration with uh, sociologists. Uh, so I, when we started this project, I, I felt that I really don't know what is happening in the heads of the girls. I mean, they like mathematics, but I don't know uh, do they want to become researchers? What do they think of us? Uh, what is their feeling about uh, this week? Uh, is it helpful to them what we do? Uh, so I decided I will hire a kind of spies, <laughs> sociologists. They will speak to them and then we will understand if our initiative uh, is, is effective, if we are really help, helping them. Um, so the goal for uh, Clemence and Alice, who are um, sociologists working on the project, is to complete sociological knowledge on sociological construction, on relations in mathematics, uh, and relations of power also. Uh, so actually, Clemence already worked on the uh, um, children of ages 10 to 15, but there is no sociological study in France on the reasons uh, of sociological disbalance for children 16, 18. So there, are, there is data of big social injustice, but we don't know really qualitative reasons of what is happening. There, there needs to be more study. So this was uh, a goal of Clemence. And as I said, our goal as organizers was to understand if we are going in the right direction, uh, helping girls and supporting them in their love of mathematics. And uh, we hope to do a book on this uh, study, and uh, I'm trying to work on a movie uh, based on the school. Uh, so these are the projects. So let me uh, tell you some difficulties that I um, face uh, with the realization of this uh, From the Lighthouse program. Uh, so related to um, inequality, I mostly speak about uh, gender disbalance. Uh, there are many more inequalities, uh, which uh, I didn't, mm, I, I will speak about them as well, but uh, on gender it's the easiest because we have uh, data uh, and because there are some women in mathematics uh, and other inequalities are much, much uh, more striking in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, there are 20% <laughs> of female researchers and 6% of female researchers in fundamental mathematics. And we kind of uh, battle for our rights. And it's very hard for um, other in exclusion, excluded people to, to battle for their rights because there are very few. It's harder to reunite. So it's also the question of uh, creating a big movement. Uh, against all these uh, injustices. So I, the first problem for me, it's really the sacralization of science. Uh, all of this discourse, which can be explicit in words, but which all also can be um, formalized in some ways, the space is structured, you know, even here I have this table, I'm, why I'm not, you know, why I'm not in a circle or things like that. Y there are many, many things which um, how, uh, institutions work that uh, force some kind of uh, relationships with us, between us. And mathematics in France stays very elitist. Uh, and when I speak, it's my definition, as I see it, uh, of sacralization of science. It's everything which pushes you to think that to be able to do mathematics, you have to be this or that, have done studies such and such, already have done this or that, be born this or that. 
uh, and so kind of distancing of the science. What, this is a very vague definition, but um, it's very hard not to see its imminence in, in, in how, how um, uh, science works. And uh, the, the effects of this is, uh, as you see, this uh, very depressing graph of the percentage of female researchers in France since 1995 to 2020. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, there is also a wonderful book by Clémence Perronet, which is called La Bosse des Maths N'existe Pas. So in French, the La Bosse des Maths, it's uh, a, uh, how you say, the... Um, Mass gene, yes, and both it's like you you go, you stack the wall, and you have something, and this is both. So both the math makes you be intelligent in math and friends. And actually, this book uh, shows that it doesn't exist. You are not born a, a mathematical genius, um, and this has to be deconstructed uh, because uh, uh, even myself, I sometimes. Um, girls with whom we work at Sigali, they say, ah, oh, but you are so intelligent. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I, I just spend more time doing this, you know, and it's very hard to deconstruct. Uh, and uh, media is not helping, so this is a journal uh, which is called Science Vie Junior. It's the most uh, famous uh, science journal in France. And this is the first time a girl uh, or a woman appears on the cover of Sci Science Vie Junior doing science. Do you know? Do you know what year it is? Do you want to guess? What is the first year the girl is doing science in a journal in France? Two thousand. You see, you even this is too optimistic. So uh, there, there are uh, real problems of support of girls to do science. Many initi initiatives exist, but I think uh, we also have to question how we present things. It's really important because sometimes even without um, wishing it, we already kind of reproduce stereotypes. Just putting a woman uh, sometimes is not enough. Uh, we, we need to think more in this direction, uh, I believe. Uh, the second problem is that with our school for girls, uh, we fight the gender inequality, but we are reinforcing other inequalities. Because if we look at who comes to the school, so the girls just have to know that it exists, write a letter of motivation and ask their professor that they want to come. And um, so as I said, like uh, the, most f uh, the most popular uh, job of their father is engineer and the most popular job of their mother is professor, school professor. Uh, and uh, this camembert, this uh, disc divided in parts, in French we call it camembert. Uh, 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 yes, yes, I also laughed at this when I came to France 10 years ago, but now I'm used to it. So uh, the, um, the uh, class favorisé and class moyenne, uh, so uh, uh, favorite class and middle class are gre green and violet. So it's very hard to touch uh, people who are hard to touch. Uh, and uh, yeah. So it's just based on 50 girls, but I think this is, this is something that we should think about when we do outreach activities. Who are we really joining? Uh, this is, I think this is really important. Uh, it depends on your goal, of course, because if you just want to share mathematics with people who love mathematics, you are reaching your goal. But if you want to reduce uh, inequality, I think it's very important to, uh, to think about these things. And my feeling is that in France, if we don't make special effort, the statistics will be common to almost all outreach activities. We really need to make an effort. Uh, and yeah, as I said, uh, people hard to reach are hard to reach. Uh, and uh, what I learned is that sometimes it's important to understand why. And sometimes we don't really know. So um, first, there is geographic and financial accessibility. Uh, we mentioned this at this conference. Uh, but for example, uh, to organize our initiatives, we have a day for mathematics in Marseille, in CIRM. So it's in the south of Marseille. And I spoke to a teacher on the north of Marseille. Uh, in Saint-Exupéry-Lyceum, it's a, 
uh, Lycée in one of the poorest uh, regions in, in Marseille. And uh, he says that it's like one hour of trip and you have to be there at nine o'clock and it's impossible for them to justify uh, uh, only for half of a day. So they will never come. So uh, it's uh, we either should do this uh, in another place closer to them, uh, either propose longer activities for more than one day so they could stay in place. Um, and second example, it's of course paid events. For example, my cinema club is uh, five euros, a little bit less than five euros. You have to play your, pay your price and uh, not everybody can uh, afford this. This can sometimes be solved if we have funding. There are some initiatives which are free, uh, but on a regular basis you have to pay your place. Uh, and second uh, point, which was surprising for me, uh, so Seagal school is one week, so girls come on uh, Sunday evening and they uh, leave on Friday, uh, Friday. so they sleep uh, at place. And three out of 26 girls on one of the schools we did this sociology studies, they said that they wouldn't come if it was mixed, if it was with boys, because their parents don't want them to come, you know? and. Uh, it's really, uh, I mean, they, uh, we also uh, confirmed with parents. This is uh, really what stops uh, girls uh, from coming to uh, any cultural event, which is longer than one day. And we had this uh, wonderful panel discussion at uh, World Meeting for Women in Mathematics. And uh, Gita Venkataram, uh, who is one of uh, important uh, people for sharing math with girls in, it uh, in India uh, says the same thing. So that's, it's really a very uh, important issue about which we should think and which for me justifies the non-mixed events. Because if you have a mixed events, uh, you will lose some girls. Some girls won't come. Um, and the fourth problem, uh, it's a real need to find budget. Uh, so at least in France, it's, uh, I think, the problem we really all share. Uh, <laughs> so I just wanted to put this picture of how we organize things. So there is one forgotten head, uh, uh, Pascal, who is a director of uh, this big uh, international center, is carrying some bags. We are all happy doctors of science organizing an event. And uh, we have funding, but it's each year we spend a lot of time to find. So it's a picture of me waiting for funding to fly by. I like this picture. Uh, yeah, but I, I have no ideas on how to find funding, so I don't say anything. Uh, and yeah, just to finish, uh, two citations. Um, one uh, which really guide me at the moment. The first is by Angela Davis. Uh, I'm always very critical concerning those women who battle for themselves to overpass, for example, the glass ceiling. This bourgeois feminism supposes that you're already on the level of the glass ceiling and all that is left to do is to cross it in order to share the space with those who decide. Let's defend interests of those who are the most oppressed. That's how a new vision of society can emerge. Um, and the second quote, um, which makes me think especially uh, related to who said it, uh, Andrei Sakharov, who invented uh, Soviet hydrogen bomb, and then uh, became an activist for disarmament and uh, dissident and uh, fight for human rights. Uh, before anything, a scientist is a human. The human values and morals are the most important in personal life and social life and in scientific life. Um, so yeah, I think outreach is uh, really much more than about mathematics. So I tried to my ask myself why I do all these projects and uh, I think my answer for today is that uh, my intention is to contribute as researcher uh, in the construction of science, which is an instrument for democracy and not an instrument against it. Um, and outreach brings me encounters with the non-mathematical reality of the world, filled both with injustice and pain and harmony and joy. Some contradictions bother me as an institution researcher and because of my privileges, I am part of the system that creates some of the problems I'm fighting against. But I am human and I love math. And thank you very much for mathematics. Thank you, Olga. Um, let's do one or two quick questions or, or longer ones. I think we are longing for a coffee break, but a few questions are, are very good. Uh, I think we could 
just to make a quick comment or okay. Um, so first of all, thanks for the very I mean, many people, even young people, would say, oh yeah, but anyway, there's not many people with disabilities in academia, so it, it's not something we need to worry about. And so that's the, that's the thing, so that's the point, so it may be a kind of a, a circle, so we need to find that there's not many people in the academic context that care of the structure. And I'm, I'm taking this very impairment that there can be like Okay, is there another question, Emil? To you. Yes, thank you. It's very. Uh, I mean, I do, I don't have anything to say. Then yes, we. I think we should to look first at ourselves before thinking that the mathematical problem is somewhere somewhere else than in the community. Yeah. Thank you very much for the passionate talk, and I think that passion is an extremely important thing in in communicating mathematics, so let's, let's keep it, yeah? <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, two other things, uh, just just maybe as, a, as, as comments, I think that you, you can find some interesting things in concerning uh, mathematics in mass media, especially films, in, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, volume on mathematical cultures. Uh, there is a there is an article by Marcus Panzer which, which is quite interesting. Maybe it could be interesting for for you, and that uh, there is also I'm, I'm reminded with, for, from many things that you say about uh, there is a community doing uh, so philosophy of mathematics which is called philosophy of of uh, mathematical practice, and uh, and this might be also something which which could be interesting uh, for for you. So thank you very much for the talk and for the passion. Yeah, thank you. I think there are many, many thoughts uh, in the community about this, and uh, yes, but I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think what is important is to also relate this with practice, because we understand there is some prejudice and some uh, problems in media, but we also have to understand that there are direct effects uh, on outreach that we uh, should think uh, to counterbalance with our action. But yeah, it's a very passionate subject also to, to look how it works, yeah. We have one final question here. So it's a question and remark, but uh, you that's true to what you say. We have to reach the unreached people, unreachable people. And uh, I see uh, three things that we have to do and some that you don't use, you, you could use. In France, we, we have a, a network uh, that is called IREM. Uh, it's a network of um, uh, research institute for um, for math education, and the the one of the most things of that for you could be that we reach people where they are. So uh, go out of your house and go to their house. So it's a first remark, but uh, one thing maybe more important and. Uh, more difficult to, to do would be to reach uh, the journalists and to reach uh, the, 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 the politics. And uh, uh, in France now, you know that uh, we don't have uh, mathematics anymore at uh, 
at the lycée level, and uh, we fight, uh, and we we could uh, we we succeeded to reach uh, the journalist until uh, the the end of uh, January. It's a uh, it's a really hard thing to do. Uh, for the moment, we don't have the 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 the, the here of the politics, but uh, it's really something that uh, one everyone uh, uh, among us should do. Try to reach the journalists, and not only the new medias, because uh, if if you want to um, the, the 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 people uh, everywhere to know that uh, mathematics are useful, enjoyable, and so on. Uh, the, the people in the population sh should know, and they still watch TV and things like that. So uh, we have to do this job, and it's not really easy, and it's something more to do uh, with uh, what you do. Yes, there are many initiatives also in universities uh, joining journalists and scientists. There are, there are some things which are going in this direction. There is also a wonderful site for French people, which is called Expert. For female mathematicians, you just inscribe and uh, you give your area of research and journalists will contact you. But yeah, it's uh, the work to do. But uh, in my experience, journalists that already have contact with you, they will recontact you. So it's uh, once you have a good connection, you start to be a source and it works well. Thank you. Let's thank Olga once more. Thank you more. very much. Yeah, thank you.